All right, here we go. So I've created a little little thing here. Rather than using the letters, I've gone for um, plus seven to plus zero in terms of the uh, the ones and stuff. Uh, so we'll see how uh, that goes. Um, and yeah, the so I figured we'd start with ones um, and go from there. So. Let's just start. Um, we'll start with, I'm going to skip cancellation for now because that is going to be probably one of the more controversial ones. So we'll save that probably for last. But uh, moving on from there, the Wand of Cold. The Wand of Cold has a few uses. Um, so it's obviously just an offensive wand that you can zap at things to cause damage, which is probably not its best use. Um, you know, you can use it for that. You can use it for crossing water. Uh, so, you know, you can freeze the water and then walk on top of it, which is probably the scenario where I use it, if I use it at all. So it's worth carrying like one around uh, as like an, as an emergency reason for that. But like, I wouldn't, you know, carry too many of them around or anything like that. So it's kind of useful. It's kind of not, it's very easy to identify. It's not that common. Um, so, you know, when you do get them, you probably want to hold on to one of them. But um, there's not too much to say about that. You zap it, it does damage, it freezes stuff. Apart from that, I can't really see, you know, much, much else used for it. So we're just going to put that in the uh, plus one category here. Uh, and we'll try, and we'll probably have to end up having to readjust everything anyway. Uh, oh, wait, I presume you can all see this. Let me, yes, you can. All right, excellent. Um, right, so moving on from there, create monster. It has some uses. Um, it, you know, mostly it's useful for the enemies rather than yourself. But it does have a use, obviously, if you are altar camping. So if you want to get a, a sacrifice gift, um, and you know you want to <laughs> hot take. It's not a hot take trick. It's a cold take. Um, <laughs> the um, the create monster is useful at an altar, but apart from that, the most use it has is you picking it up so that monsters can't use it. But yeah, you can use it to obviously summon a bunch of monsters to kill and sacrifice at an altar in order to get uh, your gifts. Um, the only other kind of situations where it might be useful is um, if you're like a priest and you want to create a whole bunch of wraiths on the, um, the, the quest home level. Um, and then take them out of the quest home level and eat them uh, to get yourself to max level um, type thing. Uh, but apart from that, yeah, it's got some use, but it's not really that useful. Uh, moving from there, uh, death. Death is obviously pretty good. Uh, it will kill things, you know, you zap it, pew pew, and things die. Um, it's There are a few creatures um, that are not not many creatures are immune to it. Obviously, you know, death himself or herself is immune to death and will only make it stronger. It's really good. Uh, it's but in particular, this wand is really good against some of the strongest enemies in the game that are not vulnerable to other stuff. So, talking particularly about the the Wizard of Yendor, Rodney, uh, is you know that's what this wand is for. You zap death at Rodney and Rodney dies. The biggest downside to the Wand of Death is the fact that it can miss uh, relatively frequently, so you may need to um, recharge it. Um, the good thing about it is that you can recharge it over and over again. It only has a small chance of blowing up each time. But yeah, uh, it's you know it's basically the AK-47 of um, NetHack, unless you're playing one of those variants that actually has an AK-47 in it. Um, yeah, it, it, it kills things. It's the wand of death and things die when you zap it at them. Um, it can be less useful if you find an early one because you won't have any protection against the the, uh, the, the ray reflecting off the wall coming back and hitting you and killing you. So it's more useful when you have either reflection or magic resistance to not kill yourself with it. Um, but yeah, that's... Um, that's pretty much all there is to say about death. Digging, digging is very useful. It's a utility wand, but it's also a very good escape, escape wand. So if you're in trouble, there's monsters all around you. 
you zap it at the floor digging is s tier i i am um, I, I i you know i hate this whole alphabetical s is not the, f the first letter in the alphabet a is you know so if you want to call it a tier digging is pretty good but it's not as i mean it's it's very common as well um but i'm not going to try and uh say that being common means it's should doesn't belong in a, in a in a higher tier i think even if it's common and it's very useful it still belongs in a higher tier so it is useful as an escape item it's very useful for digging through the walls of the dungeon to make yourself shorter path paths um but it's not as good as other options for so i think i want to skip here just talking about like i think it, other escape options can be better teleportation can be better because you can either use it on yourself or the enemies um so but but obviously if you're surrounded digging can be better because right you know it gets you completely off the level which is really good um but yeah uh has any other niche uses that it has obviously you're going to need a bunch of them to get through the plane of earth without um doing it the extremely tedious way um but yeah that's primary is, is primary really good for the escape option and very good as a convenience option instead of pickaxing your way through everything okay enlightenment oh you know it's it's nice but carry one around if you want uh it's good for seeing your stats but you know it's not exactly the most important wand in the game Dendy face, dendy face, dendy face. I have no idea what that means. Um, I can't see the emojis on my thing, only, only text. <laughs> enlightenment is good for those who don't practice proper notes. Yes, in that game that I was just playing there, if I had enlightenment, it would be pretty, it would be uh, quite useful. Um, it's useful for seeing if, you know, in terms of actually being able to save you from something, like that's what makes something. A lot of these wands are quite good because they can save you from a tricky situation. Enlightenment can't really save you from a tricky situation, but it maybe can tell you that it's safe for you to pray, which then can get you out of a, a tricky situation. Um, yeah, so it's handy, but like nobody, uh, nobody ever said, "Man, I wouldn't have died in that game if only I if only I'd had a wand of enlightenment," you know. <laughs> Dig and enlightenment best wands for new players. I mean, no, the best wand for new players is this one. Which I mean, let's just get that out of the way right now. Wishing, um, wishing is obviously the best item in the game, best wand in the game, because it can get you any of these other wands. If you so, it can get you multiple copies. You can, you can get the wand of wishing and then wish for three death wands if you want. So that kind of obviously makes it the best wand in the game. It's the most versatile item in the game. Um, yeah, I think that we do. I think wishing needs to be in a, in a tier of its own. Um, it can get you any item in the game apart from with a few rare exceptions. You know, you can't wish for more wishes. Um, you can't wish for the amulet of Yendor. You can't... Um, I don't know what... It, you can't wish for the amulet or the uh, quest artifact or the invocation artifacts and all that stuff plus nine yeah we'll see we'll see how we are <laughs> plus nine is the is the tier that you never want to go to in an actual game so maybe we'll see if we we'll see we might need to create more uh, more levels to this tier list uh, as we go but we'll see but yeah oh, it uh, it's it's so versatile is the thing you can get anything you need um out of it and so it's obviously and it's and it's kind of in a way, for me, the wand of wishing is like ex exemplifies what NetHack is. Like, no other game that I've ever played. Like, will you get a, you know, get a prompt that asks you, you know, for what do you wish, and you get to type in whatever you want and whatever you write down, you get it. Uh, it doesn't show your stats though. Yeah, but you can wish for three wands of enlightenment if you really want to. Um. And that, that prompt for what do you wish is just like, and you have to think about it and type the answer is just like something that you won't get in any other game. Um, and you see people like stop in their tracks, like in the first time they get it and they're like, what do I do? What do I can get anything? It's like, and yeah, that just, the wonder of wishing 
is what make net, net hack so great in so many ways. So it's definitely the best wand in the game, and I would say the best item in the game. Um, you know, overall, easily. I don't think that's a very controversial take. Uh, okay, so moving on, fire. Uh, fire is does damage like cold, but getting a zero three wand is a bit broken. I think. I think it's broken too for players like us who have a lot of experience playing the game. But you, I think you have to be very careful as a, an, a developer of NetHack tuning the game for all the old hands who've who've, who've done it all. Um, you know, uh, I think you need you need to open keep the door open for new players. If a new player can get to the castle, the fact that they can then essentially complete their ascension kit, I think is I think that's a good thing because they're still probably going to die um, later on when they encounter something they've never seen before. Like, like the, the getting to the castle is like the struggle, um, and then once you get to that castle and the wand, it's like just don't stuff up. And I, I kind of like that the way that the game works like that um, because you don't want you don't want super hard. Um, you know, you don't want it to be such a struggle in the later parts of the game when you've sunk, you know, 10 hours into it, um, sort of thing, yeah. The Excalibur is op- is a similar... Um, yeah, I I kind of agree uh, Excalibur is OP. This is a wand tier list, but um, it is OP, but um, I, I love that NetHack has that kind of adjustable difficulty in that you can play the class that ha- has the, the Orb of Fate, that that can get Excalibur not really in um, in 3.7 as a Valkyrie though but yeah I like the fact that you can tune the difficulty um, by picking your different roles and, and that sort of stuff anyway moving on though um, fire we were talking about fire so fire much like digging can get you out of a scrape uh, by you can engrave Elbereth with it uh, semi permanently like you can do the same thing with digging as well but Half the time with digging, you end up just digging through the next floor um, anyway, because it gets you out of it. So for that, so for that case, I think kind of digging is is could be made for a case that's better than fire. Um, fire will also stop you from getting green slimed though, so it's quite useful. Uh, I don't know. I'm kind of. I think that I belong. I think they both have similar utility as an escape item. Um, Digging has more utility as just a, you know, convenience. Item fire is good against green slime. Yeah, but they they really belong in the same tier as me. The fire is definitely better than cold for for the for that reason that it can, you can engrave El breath with it and it will get you out of trouble and you can it can stop you from being set on fire. Um, so, yeah, so that fire is definitely better than cold. Um, yeah. Um, a scroll of fire will also do the same thing, though, um, and I think, uh, yeah, but, but um, yeah, obviously the one has more charges and so forth. Yeah. Anyway, uh, it probably comes down to which one is lighter to carry at that point. All right, so let's leave fire where it is. Light, uh, light is, light is garbage. Um, you know, it's a, uh, it it. It might be slightly more useful if it could stay, the light source could like stay on the wand. Or, you know, like in old school Dungeons and Dragons, you could cast light on an object and have that be like uh, a th- even a temporary light source. But because it only lights this permanently the space you're in and then you move out of that space, it's like, it's garbage. It's only useful for poly polying in, in something else. Uh, okay, lightning. Lightning, similar to, is... Lightning is like, a, it does damage. It can write El Breath semi-permanently to get you out of it. But it also blinds you and it blows up um, wands and stuff like that if you zap it at a monster. So all these kind of, yeah, a light, wand of light that follow you around would be great. That's called a lamp. Though they already have those in the game, I guess, yeah. But um, but yeah, it would be cool if you could like, you know, in, um, I remember playing like, you know, Dungeons and Dragons and like you cast light spell on like, you know, a coin and then you throw the coin down the bottom of the well and you can see it going down and how far it is or that sort of stuff. Yeah, it would be, I think it would be, make it more useful. You wouldn't want to make it, you know, you wouldn't want to obviously replace lamps, um, though. 
Um, so I don't know. I don't know how you'd balance that. Personally, I find the need to be hoarding 10 lamps if you don't have a magic lamp is just a very annoying part of playing in Gehenna. So I would, um, yeah, a short lamp, yeah. So I think it would be a welcome change for me. I don't think that the darkness doesn't make Gehenna um, spawn proofing a room for inventory management. Yeah. Oh, I guess because if you cast the light. No, yeah, so if you cast light, and then enemies can't spawn within your line of sight, I guess. Um, but yeah, that's probably a very niche case. Usually my inventory management um, and my stashing and all that kind of stuff, I would never leave myself in a really vulnerable spot when I'm doing that anyway. And my stashes are usually located in like relatively safe areas anyway. So yeah, no, nah, that definitely doesn't, doesn't move it up the, up the, up the list. Locking, um, locking is mostly useless. It has a few n niche. I can't believe I'm getting skill issues right now. No, I mean, I just, um, I just don't, uh, for me, I mean, this is my tier list. You can make your own. I just don't find light all that useful. Um, I don't, in fact, that the wand of light is so fiddly to use and so, um, limited in its range and all that stuff that I would, um, I just wouldn't bother, don't bother with it. Is it just me or does the word light look like it's spelled wrong? No, it's spelled right, but now I want to say licked. Uh, locking, yeah, locking has some niche uses. You can, um, for example, you can use it to create a door where in a, in a, in a doorway that where the door has been destroyed. Um, maybe it's somewhat useful on like the astral plane I think I've seen heard of some people using it to lock door create lock doors behind them um, that sort of thing from range but really it's pretty niche use um, it's one of those no message engraved test wands that you just never find out what it is until the end of the game and you generally don't care about it that much um, if anyone else has some interesting uses for the locking spell let me know but for me it's so niche that I basically don't bother carrying it around magic missile magic missile does damage it does so little damage though um that is basically not worth the only the only thing it's useful for if you have a bunch of them and you have the carry capacity is for like killing sea creatures from range and and that sort of stuff and softening up um mind flayers or something like that but um you're probably better off going with one of the other ones which are going to do more damage. The spell magic missile is really powerful because it scales with your XP level. This one magic missile just does not enough damage for it to be useful. Yeah, it's useful for monsters behind boulders and so on. Basically, it's about as useful as throwing rocks is, is what it is. Any, any case where you would use the wand of magic missile because it's slightly more convenient than throwing garbage rocks at things. Uh, all right, moving on. Make invisible. Oh, make invisible is quite useful. Now I'm going to do this tier list in 3.7 Net Hack Land, where the wand of make invisible does not make you permanently invisible, uh, which makes it less useful. I, is it less useful than create monster, cold or lightning? I'd say it is. Yeah. Um, if this was, and even in 3.6, you'd use it once, job done, and then throw it away. So I'm going to say it's pretty, pretty, it pretty useless. Um, you have usually other sources of invisibility and getting permanently intrinsic in invisibility that you can't get from the wand um, in 3.7, like a potion, a blessed potion of invisibility, uh, should make you permanently invisible, I believe. So that makes the wand pretty much uh, redundant so that goes in the completely garbage tier. Wand of Nothing. Obviously the only the only use for this wand is uh, getting the achievement in TNNT for breaking a wand of nothing. I think the achievement is called predictably nothing happens. Uh, apart from that the uh, only useful thing you can do with a wand of nothing is to polymorph it into a wand that is actually useful. So that obviously goes there. Uh, okay, moving on from there. Opening 
is even less useless, even more useless. Worst ones to find a gnome within a dark. Yeah, there's let's do the do the tier list for um gnomes with wands. Yeah, death death is still up there. Wishing. Imagine if gnomes could make wishes. Do any of the variants do that, where like gnomes can start wishing up uh, stuff for themselves? I wonder what a gnome would wish for. Uh, but going back to opening, opening is useless. Uh, yeah, pretty much only slightly, <laughs> slightly uh, more useless than, slightly less useless than nothing, basically. Polymorph, polymorph. Polymorph is useful uh, for. Oh, I, I'm kind of t tossing up between these two things. So, what do we? What do you use a wand of polymorph for? You use it for changing things into other things. Uh, it's like a wand of wishing that you have to keep rolling the die on uh, to try and get what you want. So you can, for example, polymorph a wand of nothing. And if you get really lucky, it'll turn into uh, a wand of wishing. Um, yeah, if you can, so that, you know, all things, you can use it for polymorphing unicorn horns into magic markers if you get lucky. Uh, the Probably the number one case for me for using the wand that I, where I use the wand of polymorph is I get to the castle. I don't want to use a wish on um, some of the more common items like common, especially rings like i want a ring of free action or i want a ring of levitation especially if i'm missing both of those things i will for sure um start polypiling rings because the odds of you getting a good one of the two rings that you're looking for is a lot better than getting just the one that you're looking for so definitely um i find it handy for specifically for getting for, for rings it's, it's kind of less useful for trying to get magic markers because things are less likely to turn into magic markers than they are to turn into mundane things but rings will always turn into other magic rings so it's very useful for that reason and wands similarly will always turn into other magic wands but i find myself not really being um that desperate for wands um usually you can find everything that you want there was the only i think the only other case good for getting rid of junk you could just leave the junk on the floor. <laughs> um, magical cleanup crew. Yeah. The um the only other case it was one game where I had like I only found a single wand of teleport. Wand of Marie Kondo. Uh that's what the um the garbage area in the uh the dev team quest is is for. You go in there and you shove all your things in the lava. There was one game that I had where I um I didn't have a wand of te a teleport. Like I only found one the entire game, and I tried to. I think I tried to poly for some teleport wands in that case. But yeah, mostly for rings. The other thing you can use it for is if there's like uh, something strong which is going to kill you and it's in your face, and you're desperate and you have no other option, you can try and polymorph the enemy into something that is hopefully less threatening. But your odds are just as bad or worse if you're going to get something, you know, much worse than what you already have. Uh, and of course, the other thing is for polymorphing yourself, um, particularly if you're playing a monk or something like that, um, or you don't have levitation, but you have a wand of polymorph and a ring of polymorph control. You can polymorph yourself into a vampire and then just go flying around everywhere. Who needs levitation? So yeah, definitely, definitely quite useful. But um, once you kind of have everything you need, then it becomes much less useful. Probing, probing is pretty useless. The only I have used it a few times. Um, the only you know real use cases for it are, say you're a, a lawful creature and you're wandering around the mines and you happen you, you want to find some good armor, but you don't want to go murderizing all the dwarfs, um, especially when you don't know what armor they have. And you want to figure out, does this dwarf have good armor or not? You can zap probing at them. See if they have that dwarvish mithril. And if they do, then you murder them. It's a very niche use case, though. And a, a stethoscope will pretty much do the same thing. And the other use for it is on the astral plane. Uh, you can use it to tell the alignment of the high priest on the astral plane 
from much further out so you don't have to waste turns stepping onto the actual high altar to figure out if it's your altar or if it's not your altar it will save you like you know five turns going there and back or something like that so it's not like it's not my you know it's not the end of the world or not uh but you know sometimes i guess five turns on astral could make the difference between life or death but still um i wouldn't bother uh i i do tend to carry one just one for that reason onto the planes but i'm not sure i should even bother all right secret door detection eh, it's pretty useless um it's nice it's ha it's convenient uh if you're on in Moloch's sanctum and you want to find the the door without stepping on all the traps it's useful if you're on the planes and you don't have another means of detecting the portals you can use it but there are better options for um for, for um for that and as for finding Moloch's sanctum uh, door, you know, you, you you have the bell of opening, not doing anything else at that point anyway, so you can just use the remaining charges on that. So it's pretty useless. Um, sleep, ooh, sleep goes here. Sleep is very useful. Um, you know, I usually name my wands of sleep Minotaur Bane because it's just, you know, it takes one of the biggest threats in the mid game and just completely nullifies them um so for that reason it's very good um yeah what what's more to say you put monsters to sleep and then you wail on them until they die and they can't do anything about it obviously this doesn't work on everything um you know some creatures don't sleep um you can miss with it um that's the other thing which kind of affects the kind of the usefulness of some of these wands is the fact whether or not they're a ray or a beam um that sort of thing so rays can bounce off of walls um and also they can miss uh so the death wand notoriously will bounce off walls and can miss many times in a row whereas like teleportation wand is not i think it's a beam so it can the i or i i think we want to put teleportation pretty high i'd, I'd say it's 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 not. A, it's might, way more common than death, but it never misses. Never misses teleport. You zap teleport at something, it's going away. It's going somewhere else, and it never misses. Now, that's limited usefulness against something which can teleport back to you, like the wizard or the riders. Yeah. Um, or the wizard or the riders or your quest nemesis or the major demons teleportation is practically useless against them um, because they will just teleport straight back to you um, but for everything else um, yeah it'll just get them out of the way um, so for that reason death is kind of death will kill things but it can miss teleportation never misses um, and especially on like the astral plane it'll just clear out your path and you can just take turns and, and charge down the the gaps that it leaves um you take out multiple enemies in one turn rather than whacking on one enemy for several turns so yeah it's really good obviously you can teleport yourself away with it as well on the levels where that's permitted um so in general yeah it's very it's very common but still yeah the best one of the best things um in the game if you have a wand of especially for an early game character if you find a wand of teleportation your odds of survival just go go up so much because you can just get yourself out of trouble when you get into it having that escape item just makes all the difference and it's a generally a pretty good escape item you know obviously a wand of digging is an escape item but then you're forced to go further down the dungeon into more danger and you have to work your way back up um, teleportation is more useful more versatile because you can teleport other things or yourself so yeah um, it's pretty great slow monster eh. Slow Monster is good. Um, I kind of, um, yeah, I kind of want to put Slow Monster. It has very, it has niche uses. If you're like fighting something which you really don't want to get into melee range, like a mind player, you could zap Slow Monster at it. But you're probably better off just doing something else, which will kill it faster. Um, 
the one use which I do find for it is for um, uh, especially in 3.7 since the bugle nerf slow monster will get you out of a air elemental so if you're on the plane of air and you're engulfed by an air elemental and you have a slow monster wand you can just zap it at it uh, it will never miss because you're engulfed in it and then it will uh, expel you so it's quite useful for that reason that's a pretty niche use of it though apart from that you're probably better off just trying to kill things rather than um, making them slow first apart from those ones that yeah you really don't want to get in melee range but a lot of those ones that you really don't want creatures that you really don't want to get into melee range like mind flayers cockatrices green slimes they're already kind of slow enough for you to kite them anyway so it doesn't really help you that much um so yeah it's it's better than it's better than the uh, magic missile or enlightenment but not much yep okay uh speed monster uh for the same reason uh, in 3. Point, this is a 3.7 I guess tier list uh, and in 3.7 the wand of speed monster is not that useful because it is no longer permanent but unlike the but it does give you a whole bunch of turns of speed so like if you're and, and in particular in 3.7 because speed boots are somewhat less attractive than fireproof water walking boots because of all the lava in Gehenna you might find yourself without very fast speed and the wand of speed monster if is relatively common and it's enough to like just when you find one just drain it zapping at yourself and give yourself like 500 a thousand turns of speed and then chuck it on the floor and it's useful for that reason particularly if you're going to astral and you don't have speed boots just um keep a wand of speed monster on you when you're on the plane of water just drain it um zap a whole bunch on yourself uh even before you step onto the plane of earth to be honest and it will probably last the whole rest of the run so it's quite useful for that reason um uh, in 3.7 in particular but uh and it's useful for pets um obviously but um apart from that yeah not much else to say striking is it's not garbage it's useful for breaking boulders mostly um you know it's uh apart from that it's pretty useless i do want to say that it's like cold and lightning are probably and uh these are better than striking but we won't we won't quite split it into too many tiers so yeah striking it's good early game range damage uh you know if you're finding yourself against um back up against the wall and you've got to you want to kill things at range and you have not many other options striking is good it's great for breaking boulders uh, conveniently especially if you don't want to carry around a heavy pickaxe but apart from that almost anything else is better undead turning is garbage um, in fact it's really annoying when people keep reviving your lizard corpses uh, using it um, <laughs> uh, so yeah I'd um you can i think you can use it to some i've never really used it i think you can use it to like create revive your pets in fact that was the one time we used it during net hackathon was um we accidentally had our pet killed yeah the pet which we brought all the way with us and uh we tried we, we did cpr on it with the wand of un undead turning and revived our pet with it um and that was a pretty magical moment so i almost want to put it higher than um for that reason but that is that's very situational so um, I don't think I'm going to put it any higher than that. Okay, and so the last one left is cancellation. <laughs> don't put cancellation in your blow up your wands. Yep, uh, it's going to stay out the out the back. So this is going to be the, the I think probably the most controversial one. Um, but this is my tier list, so I just I get to decide um, where it goes. So uh, let, let's do this. Let's add a new row below, and uh, oh, let's go here. Yeah, negative one, and let's put the wand of cancellation in there. <laughs> um, so, in my opinion, the wand of cancellation is less than useless. It's actively harmful. Um, yes it does I know it does have its useful uses and those uses are 
are, are good. Like, yes, you can blank stuff with it, but blanking stuff with it is just a convenience. Um, you know, like you can blank stuff other ways. Um, so it's it's just a convenient convenience thing for blanking. You can use it to save yourself from a cockatrice. Um, you know, if you zap it at a cockatrice, or I think a fucubi as well, it will stop their you know kind of unique attacks and things like that. Um, so that's kind of useful. You can use it against rust monsters and disenchanters to stop them from ruining your stuff. But to be honest, if a rust mo a bugle can will do the job just as well, um, and it will, you know, if you if that's not run ending, um, to have your stuff, you know, slightly rusty, um, and you can, there's generally other ways of dealing with it. So for those, you know, those all those uses that I've mentioned, they are kind of they they're nice and they're uncursing armor. Uh, if you if you get negative one armor, you just ditch it. And get something else. You can use it on your bag of holding um, as well. To um, so you can use it on your bag of holding to uncurse your bag of holding, for which it is quite useful. But for all those kind of convenience uses for blanking and stuff like that, you can just leave it on the ground, annotate the level, and go back for it if you need it. Um, but like, yeah, yeah, that that is useful. But you can go back for it if you if you really need it need it for that. If you can, uh, so Cloud's mentioning that if you go. Uh, negative two speed boots. Um, you can change them to plus zero speed boots. It is useful for that. So it does have its uses. I'm not not disagreeing with that. But like those uses are all mostly convenience and stuff like that. And in in a in exchange for that, like the risk versus reward. The risk obviously with the wand of cancellation is that you will blow up your bag of holding, um, which uh, is not so bad in 3.7 as um, as brush that toast kind of mentioned uh, because in 3.7 if you blow up if you put a wonder cancellation in your bag of holding and blow it up you lose the bag but the contents of the bag will still exist they will get scattered to the you know they'll get the, in an explosion they'll get scattered around um, which is very bad if you're on a lava level still you might lose most of it um, <laughs> John apparently lost plus his plus seven elven arrows and turned them into plus zero. Yeah, you still lose the back. Yeah, you still lose the back in, in 3.7, um, and all your stuff gets scattered uh, around the level. Um, but you, yeah. So so for like that that downside, that downside is is can be run ending, right? And that run ending thing that you have can happen at any point the whole time you're carrying that around. So for every turn for the whole game, you're carrying around like this loaded gun that one, um, you know, you, one fat finger hit the period key accidentally and put everything in your bag, which I've done. Um, and it like, you know, every single turn of the game, you're risking that. F and what are you risking that for that run ending potential thing for? You're risking it for the ability to blank stuff, to maybe get rid of um, rust monsters, and that sort of thing. So for me, it's just not worth it. Um, because of those uses, I will yeah leave them on the ground or put or even carry them carefully to my stash and put put them in my stash, but I won't carry them around with me the whole game. Um, so there we go. I think uh, that's my tier list. Um, yeah, uh, if you agree or disagree. Uh, Feel free to, you know, obviously you've, you've mentioned that as we've gone, but yeah, um, I think that's going to be it. Uh, I'll probably do some other ones of these at another time, um, looking at, you know, rings, other items. There's so many items in NetHack. I was, I just thought I'll do a tier list for NetHack, and then I was like, wait a minute, we'll be there for three hours if we try and do every item in the game. Uh, I think we better limit it. So, for now, this is what my um. My, my my tier list for ones looks like let me know what yours looks like and uh yeah apart from that i think i'll sign off so thanks everybody and uh monster difficulty yeah monsters um i'm planning on doing you know plan on doing quest artifacts or, or just artifact all artifacts in general rings um maybe monsters yeah as well yeah but uh thanks everyone i'm going to call it there so catch you next time